Welcome to this uh, short video uh, that is going to explain uh, as to how uh, simple holes in the heart like uh, ASTs, VSTs and PDAs are closed without the need for an open heart surgery nowadays. Uh, I'm Dr. Prem Shekhar, an interventional pediatric cardiologist uh, based in uh, Chennai, India. And I'm going to explain uh, this uh, pro procedure through the use of uh, a heart model and uh, specific occluders. Uh, now, if we look at the heart model, uh, we will see that uh, there, there are four chambers in the heart. Uh, the, uh, this is the right side of the heart and this is the left side of the heart. And you have a uh, right upper chamber here and the left upper chamber here. And uh, if you look inside the heart, you will see this is the partition between the right and the left upper chamber. And there is a white uh, portion in which if there is a hole, it's called an atrial septal defect. And uh, this is these are the pumping chambers, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And this is the partition between the two. Uh, this is called the ventricular septum and if you have a defect here, it's called a VST or ventricular septal defect. And if you see there are two tubes uh, that drain blood out of the heart. From the left pumping chamber is the iota, the red tube which pumps, takes pure blood to the body. And uh, from the right pumping chamber is the blue tube, the pulmonary artery which uh, drains uh, which pumps uh, impure uh, blood to the lungs. And uh, patent ductus arteriosus is a communication between the uh, red tube and the blue tube. Uh, this communication is essential for survival of the baby when the baby is inside the mother. Uh, that is how uh, the good oxygenated blood from the mother gets into the baby's uh, body for uh, providing nutrition and oxygen and it's uh, supposed to close uh, post uh, birth. Uh, in some cases, it doesn't close and remains open, causing symptoms like uh, breathing difficulty or uh, poor feeding and uh, poor weight gain and needs to be closed. Uh, now, uh, if we look at these uh, occluders, these are all, uh, this is an atrial septal uh, defect occluder, uh, very soft and uh, made of nickel and titanium alloy called uh, nitinol, uh, which uh, enables it to be slenderized and taken through small uh, uh, tubes called catheters like these, uh, which are uh, basically introduced into the body through uh, vessels uh, that uh, uh, drain out and from the heart. So a small puncture is made in the uh, uh, leg region in the groin area to access these vessels and then they are introduced into the body so and uh, once inside the body they are uh, guided into the heart through these major vessels that drain out and uh, uh, from the heart uh, it can either go in on the right side through the uh, uh, inferior vena cava or through the left through uh, the iota and uh, once inside the defect is accessed and uh, these occluders are then um, positioned across the defect and uh, the device is released. Uh, now uh, if you see here uh, you can see that uh, the device has been slenderized and introduced into the IO, uh, into the catheter and uh, this is then taken across with the help of a stiff uh, cable which is quite soft at the end but uh, stiffer down and uh, this is introduced through uh, the tube once uh, the tube is positioned across the defect that needs to be closed um, and uh, when the device or the occluder comes out the nitinol gives it the characteristics of uh, being able to uh, re-attain its uh, normal uh, position which is needed to close the hole. So if we imagine that this is the hole and the tube is across within the heart. Now uh, if you can watch carefully the uh, device is being exposed on the other side of the defect so it opens up like an umbrella and uh, 
uh, once that is done, then the device is again opened up on this side so that what you have is a approximation of uh, the defect on either side of the hole. I'll just show you a side view of the same. If you are not happy, the device can be retrieved and uh, repositioned again. So this is how it comes into the heart. Uh, you are looking at the hole from the side and uh, this is the um, uh, far side of the defect and uh, this is the near side of the defect. And once the tube is across the defect, the device is opened up so uh, to approximate it against the far side of the defect and there's a connecting waste which holds it across and uh, subsequently the this near side is opened up and uh, this is how it would look uh, when, when uh, the uh, device is fully opened up and the, occlude, uh, the defect is closed. And once we ensure that this position is stable, we then uh, can uh, just rotate uh, the sheath cable and take the uh, device out. Uh, and uh, this is how uh, the, the, the uh, defect would be closed on either side. So this is the far side and this is the near side and as you can see the defect is held by a connecting waist. So it's fairly secure like how you put a stud in the ear and uh, it stays in place. So safely done. This is a very uh, effective and novel technique for closing um, holes in the heart. Uh, similarly we have uh, occluders for uh, closing uh, ventricular septal defects and uh, specific occluders shaped to uh, close uh, these are occluders to close the patent ductus arterioses. Uh, so nowadays uh, simple holes are uh, uh, not uh, subjected to surgery. Uh, even very small preterm babies with uh, uh, patent ductus arteriosus which need uh, closing uh, can be uh, closed using very fine, uh, small occluders uh, in uh, babies as uh, small as less than 1 kg in uh, birth weight. Uh, and uh, this saves them a major life-threatening uh, surgery. Uh, so I hope this uh, video has been useful. Thank you.